Wow, that didn't take long at all, did it? Ah. Alright, so, uh, I got the mic working. So, if I go here, you can see that it flashes in time with my voice, which is, uh, all of these things, I'm going to turn this off now. All of these things are important because while playing, uh, there is a certain amount of suspension of disbelief that has to happen. And if people think that you're trying to pull a fast one on them, they tune out. I know I do. It was kind of made because I'm kind of jaded with kind of with things like that. So it was very important for me to communicate all the things that were going on so that this suspension of disbelief could happen and the story can be told, right? And the way that the story gets told is that there are functions related to different things that allow me to create an arrangement, right? So, like this. All right, so when I get ready to play, uh, you have to remember, on the tops of each one of these, there is a, um, there, there's one of these joysticks. So for instance, this one, when I move it forward, when I push it, when I push it forward, like that, moving my finger in that direction, that's my volume. But at the same time, if I move it like this, that's my panning. So I can pan the sound that I'm playing or change its volume, right? And you can't hear it because it's being recorded through a mic, but uh, it allows me to change the, the panning and the volume. I pick a sound and then um, I go into a, a particular mode. I know these modes because once I switch to Wi Fi, before, all of the lights were the same. Right now, they're flashing in time with the tempo of the song, which is set at a 30 second loop length. Um, right now, when I begin. But if I take this one and I move my finger all the way, I, I click this to the, um, to the left, like this, you can see that that turns green just like the one here on the screen. And if I do it again, this means that I'm in record mode and it's armed. The one over here, the blue, lets me know that the element that I'm playing is unmuted. If I want to mute it, I use this joystick and then I do like that and put both of my hands in here. I do like that and it's muted and unmuted. Right? I can do that for every sound. Right? So now that I'm in this record arm mode, I'm the system has reset all of the has reset all of the um the tempo information and everything. So everything is back at square one. It does this twice. The, it does this for all of the elements except for the transform element. The transform element also does that. So doing that puts it into a record arm mode and changing it to transform puts it in a record arm mode. The reason this is important is because both of those uh, don't have any limitations on the length of what can be played. So I can do whatever I want in either of those two instances, at the very beginning or when I transform. And uh, and then either one of those will decide the loop length, right? So let's say I go here, right? And let's say I want to put some effects on it. So I go into edit mode, which is inhaling. Right? Then I hold this, then I change things. Then I can go like this.
Now the light is flashing in time with the music. And now everything will fall within those. And I can mute. I can mute two at the same time. Or just one. Or one or the other. And at this point, you should know that when I do this, when I push my finger to this direction, that puts it into um, uh, overdub mode. Both lights on the back change. This one, this one only the one on the, the one on the left hand only turns only turns red when I am in a mode where the entire system changes. This one is either red or purple, uh, which means that it's a mix of red and blue. So that means that if it's red, that means it's ready to record, but uh, now that means it's ready to record and you can hear it. did there is that I have pre-effects. If I push my if I push my finger forward, I have pre-effects. If I pull it back, I have post-effects, which means that here I can record, I can make effects that I record while I'm playing, and I can pull it back and I can have uh, effects that are only uh, there for effect. Right? So that's how I made into right? Right? So, unmute. to explain exactly what the transform is going to do. It's going to take a recording of, of everything I just played and then I'm going to be able to change it based on my hand position and intent, I guess you could call it. So, I leave it so that there's no transform happening if I'm not blowing. Otherwise, it's just a mush of sound. And I can play it. Right? And effects. take this into edit mode right now that handles both sides but I can do both sides
anything I do in the transform mode can be turned into uh, into the next sound, the next loop. This is the transform. So now, let's say I find something. Right? Let's say I like that. Now, I could record that the same as I would. This is yellow now, which means that both the uh, red and the green light are uh, there. So that means that it can, I can now record. How the uh, that's how the system works, uh, and this is the reason uh, for the next step that I've been proposing is that now that all of these things are in a software form, and especially since adding the Wi-Fi capabilities, it makes it a lot easier for this type of information to be used to synchronize. Because if I can synchronize eight loopers on one machine that are already networked to the sensor interface, then it's nothing but a couple of network switches to control 20 other systems that are all on the same network. And I think that being able to have this ability to transform uh, audio coming from other uh, beat jazz systems that are in the same area will create a sound, a soundscape that uh, I can't sing it right now. I could only kind of sort of imagine it, but I imagine that it would be very um, overwhelmingly huge. And it would be something that I would be very interested in seeing happen, which is one of the reasons for building this system in the first place, is to kind of uh, explore where sound can go in the context of mixing it with these performative aspects, with these motion aspects and um, being able to adapt to the software to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. So, thank you for watching my super long video. I uh, hope you um, hope it's useful. And like I said, um, the plans for building these devices are up on um, Thingiverse. Uh, if you search for Beat Jazz Controller, you'll find it. And uh, the software, the exact software I'm using right now, is on um, my GitHub profile uh, under Node Zero, N O D E Zero. All right. So happy hacking. Peace.